Hey everybody, it's your favorite gold miner, prospector, and geologist, Jeff Williams. Today I'm gonna show you how you can use Google Earth, geology, and a UTV to find hidden gold deposits that are extremely rich. So let's get on to it. Look at that, they're wild. They probably saw the camera and the, the Cobro stick and said, is that a rifle? Hope not, let's get the heck out of here. Hey, how do you like our new lights, huh? Pretty funkalicious. So without having an off-road vehicle, a UTV, you would never be able to get to the spots like this. I mean, the roads are incredibly bad. Mother Nature is reclaiming everything. That's why I highly recommend, if you can, to pick up a UTV because they're gonna get you in those locations that will get you far up into the hills that you couldn't do on foot and you can put all your gear in there. Now, the reason why I picked this location is because there's a gold mine on both sides of this hill. It was extremely rich and we're gonna give it a shot by dry washing some of the mine dump here just to see if we can find something. And along the way, I'm gonna teach you some geology about why there's gold here. And the interesting thing about the gold that's here is that it's from secondary enrichment zones. The enrichment zones are basically limonite that have formed in between the contact zones of the porphyry granite and the limestone, the dolomite. Now, years ago, BLM came out here and they brought in two. I don't know how they got them up here on the mountain, but they brought in two bulldozers and they took all the material from on top of the hill. I watched them do it and they brought it all the way down to here because they wanted to seal this up. It doesn't make much sense to me because the, what they're trying to seal up was a sill where they were finding rich gold. So it wasn't a safety concern. It was more like a, we're gonna keep this on hold till later kind of concern. I was here before they brought in the bulldozers and it was flat. There was no holes, no shafts, no nothing. I've explored this mine thoroughly. There was not a problem. So why would they do that? So I'm thinking they wanted to keep this place on hold for themselves. It's the only thing I can think of. But the gold that was coming out of here is very pure because of the secondary enrichment, which means the gold was in this porphyry granite, this decomposing granite that you see here. And then up against the limestone sections, like you see here, you would have a process called metasomatism taking place where the gold would literally migrate from the granite porphyry and form in the contact zones right here. See that? All that has gold in it. And the USGS reports always say that wherever you see this green talc, the gold is very rich. And they find the green talc where the veins flatten out, not where they're vertical or steeply dipping, but where they level out. So we're gonna give this a shot today, see if we can find any gold in it. And then I'll keep you posted and I'll teach you some more geology along the way. Now that is one of the old stopes. I know it's hard to believe, but if you go in there, it opens up. They were pulling all the limonite off the back of this decomposing granite or porphyry granite. Now I know it doesn't look like much, but that is the end of a stope. I've been in there before and it opens up and the old timers were in there on their bellies cutting out the limonite seams that are up against the limestone. And of course they had to carve out all of this granite porphyry. It's like saprolite, it's decomposing, you can dig it with your finger. The interesting thing about this granite porphyry is that there's actually tiny bits of gold in it. So a lot of the mine dumps in this area have a little bit of gold in it. Now, you're not gonna get rich. In fact, you'd probably have to move a few metric tons to get anything worthwhile. It gives you a slight understanding of how these seams of limonite were formed. Inside the mine that I'm standing on down below, these seams are up to five feet thick. And because you have secondary enrichment from polymetallic replacement deposits, this stuff is extremely rich and it's in wire form too. No quartz, just limonite. And sometimes you'll have manganese oxide coating the outside, kind of like peg legs gold, if you remember that. We're gonna take all that juicy red material and we're gonna run it through a dry washer. And then I'm gonna take my little battery powered hammer drill and I'm gonna chip out what limonite is in there, collect the dust, run it through the dry washer, and then the bigger chunks we'll take back and grind it up. And I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. But I'm not gonna do nothing until you smash that like button. Smash it hard!
sure you get a good look at this. These are the layers of green talc that the old timers talked about. And they said wherever the vein flattens out below 45 degrees in dip, you're gonna see these green talc beds starting to form. And they said, wherever you see that, any limonite that is sitting on top of that, very rich. So that's why I'm all excited about this one particular zone here. Yeah, that looks good and that looks good, but the green talc is what I'm interested in. I'm gonna continue blowing this out and then later I'm gonna give you another geological lesson that's gonna help you locate these things and I'll tell you how I found this one myself. That way you can get out there, find your own gold mine. Now, here's your next geological lesson. I'm sitting on a bed of dolomite and there was a sill of porphyry granite. The sill was extremely rich. And of course they removed the sill. And inside the mountain, there are two dikes and they removed a lot of the material. I've actually been in there and there's huge stopes in there and it goes down to about maybe the three, 400 foot level. The reason why I got you here is because I found this area, first of all, by looking on USGS reports. That's number one. And when I saw that the beds of limonite were carrying gold from secondary enrichment, I was on top of it real quick. And when I saw that there was a sill involved, not just two dikes, I says, you know what? The sill has still have to have gold on it because sills sit flat, dikes sit straight up and down, or to some degree. I'm telling you this is because if you see that in the USGS reports, you need to get on it and you need to get boots on the ground and you need to prospect and sample. And that's what we're doing. Now, the reason I got you over here on top of this dolomite is because I can see all this beautiful red limonite. And of course, all the host rock and there's a little copper mixed in there too. Look what mother nature has done for me. You see it? She's basically washed a lot of this old overburden off and what left all the good juicy stuff inside because I've got bedrock here. So I'm gonna dig out some of the limonite. I'm gonna dig out whatever's in this creek cause I know there's little pieces of gold in here. I'm gonna put that in a bucket and then I'm gonna run that through a dry washer too. And that's what you should be doing too. Let mother nature do all the work. I always tell you about bedrock, but when you're out here around special areas like this, look for where mother nature's already did a lot of the washing for you. And what you're gonna do, just like in a sluice box, start at the top, dig a lot of this material out. If you really wanna know where the gold's at, break it into sections and sample it individually. Unfortunately, I've got rain clouds over my head. I don't have much time. So I'm just gonna take the whole thing and I'm gonna run it through the dry washer. We'll take it back. We'll crush the harder stuff and then I'll pan out the stuff we got out of the dry washer and then I'll show you what you'll need to be online. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> so then I'm gonna show you what the gold looks like because there's tons of gold here. It's really beautiful because it's in wire forms and a little dendritic too. And then I'm gonna tell you some secrets about gold, how it can actually precipitate out of this material under the right conditions. So let's get on to it. That almost looks like cinnabar, don't it? Look at that. That's part of the old sill I was telling you about. You see it? It looks like cinnabar, but it's not. When this video reaches 100,000 views, I'm gonna take you inside there and I'm gonna show you some of the richest veins you've ever seen. And I'll go over some more stuff here in a minute. But right now, I gotta hurry. I'm just about out of daylight and I can feel that rain coming. So dry washers are no good in the rain. Now, if this is your first time here and you don't know how to set up a dry washer, I made a fantastic video that explains all my tips and tricks on how to set these little guys up, especially the Keen 140S, which is one of my go-to dry washers when I'm out here in the field. I'm gonna leave a link right there just click on it, watch it, and it'll give you all of my tips and tricks, most of them anyway, so you can get out in the field and start finding gold. These are not only good production machines, but they're great samplers too, because I can take this thing out in the field, I can sample an area, put it in its own proprietary container, mark it, and then when I get back to the house, I'll know exactly what came from where. If it does have a lot of gold, I'll bring that or even a bigger machine. So these are great sampling machines, so don't think they're just for production. So we got all of our concentrates from the dry washer and this little guy right here. I'm gonna go ahead and screen it out down to a minus 20, minus 30, and minus 40. Pan them out separately. Anything above that, we're gonna run through the mill, crush that down. And I think you're gonna find this interesting. Are you helping me on this today, Mr. Siamese? I've also got a grab sample that I picked up while I was out there. This is all stuff that will fit into the impact mill and we'll crush that up too to see if there's anything that's locked up in these big old honking chunks of limonite. So we're gonna go ahead and put some jet dry into water and that's gonna break the 
surface tension on this water so the really super fine gold doesn't float on top. We're gonna start by cleaning out our pan. That way we don't cross contaminate. Very important that you guys don't cross contaminate. All right, we're gonna start with our 40s first. See what's in that. See how that limonite turns it blood red? All the iron oxide. And I got some manganese oxide in there too. Now I gotta go really slow with this because it's ultra fine. All right, let's see what we got. Give a little bit of a shake. And already I'm seeing some beautiful looking gold. You see it right there? And that is why classification is so important. See that? Now I'm gonna get a snapshot so you can get a closer shot of that. This is probably from that piece where we dug out of the wash because it looks like it's been pounded a little bit. We're gonna get our 30s, put that in there and see what we got. Oh yeah, look, 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 look. All right, let's see if we can push those together and get a snapshot of that. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and do the 20s. Clean out your pan, make sure it's not cross-contaminated, 20s. That's a little bit too much water. Okay, here we go. And I've got these two pieces. I don't see any gold, but I got these two pieces, so I'm gonna look at them real close. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna run everything through the mill, and I'm gonna show you what that looks like. All right, we're gonna give that a shot and see what's in it. Now that's not as fine of a grind that we can get, but for right now, I'm gonna go with it. Remember, don't wear any good clothes if you plan on panning limonite. I got a piece of gold there, I got a piece of gold there, I got a million little fines, I got another piece of gold there. Really big chunk there, whole bunch of little fines all through there, not bad. Now, I know for most of you out there, you're thinking, Jeff, that doesn't look like a lot of gold. Remember, we're just sampling, we're prospecting. This is a good indicator that those rocks contain gold. And like I said, when this video reaches 100,000 views, I'm gonna take you inside and show you what dreams are made of in there. If you guys wanna try to find your own gold mine, I highly recommend you reading our latest book, where to find gold. It's got over 40 years of experience in it and the graphics are really easy to understand. Now don't forget, at the end of this month, we're giving away a Gold Monster 1000 metal detector and a whole bunch of bags of pay dirt from the drift mine. All you gotta do is look for the little link at the end of the video that looks something like that. You're gonna click on it, make a $10 pledge and you're in like Flynn. And if you wanna see more videos on finding gold deposits that are hidden out in the desert, go ahead and watch this video right here and I'll see you on the next video.